<clears throat> Gentlemen? Oh, yes, Mr. Boss Man. Sir? Do you know why I brought you here today? For a pay rise. Nope. I can only assume a top secret mission. Absolutely. I'm glad I have you on the case, not, um, the Sally Sandy over here. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we hire you again? Well, because I'm your nephew. That is true. You are related to me. But more importantly, we have a, a, a grand new mission for you guys. Mm. One that I actually think for once Sally will be uh, will be capable of. Oh, I do love missions that I can participate in. Yeah, I know. This is the first one for you. <laughs> yeah. So, so good luck. All right, your missions... Okay, hear me out. I've, this has come from the higher-ups, okay? I had no choice in these, all right? We need you guys to dress up in clown costumes. Uh, so, sorry, what? I did a clown costumes. You know, like the the circus? You know, with the little honker nose, little wigs. Oh, um, like this weird... one that I've got in my backpack right now. Um, a good work, Sandy? Yes, that one, exactly. Like that. So we're going undercover to, what, drug bust a circus? No, 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 no. You're going to be part of the new clown division, where, where you just have to wear clown costumes. The, the clown division? Yes, we have a new clown division. Ooh, honky honky. <laughs> I, I knew you would be thrilled, Sandy. Is, is there a problem? I, I just don't understand. Well, you see, disguised as a clown, you'll stand out so much that you'll actually not stand out. No one will suspect a clown, you see. I, I see. Yeah. I suppose I can keep a I can keep a concealed weapon in that big shoe. No, 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 oh. no. No weapons. Weapons would give it away. No, no, no. <laughs> Can't have those. You have to go and punch the enemy. Oh, speaking of the clown division, hello Whoa. and welcome to Oldie But A Good. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Oh my! This week, what a what a doozy! Last time we said what a doozy, it was uh, it, it was garbage pail kids, and it was an awful time. But this time, <laughs> we've got a doozy that's not that. And boy, we're happy! <laughs> I am as happy as a CIA agent in a clown costume. Oh my goodness! Uh, this is the show. We we, we watch movies from nineteen eighty seven in the order they came out in uh, near the end of September, which is exciting. We're almost done with the year. This week's movie is called Real Men, and as always, I am Sandro. Your name is Zach. Yes. And also joining us this week is Australian rapper, Australian comedian, Australian Twitch streamer, Clue. What's up, everybody? You really emphasize the Australian part, so I figured I'd uh, <laughs> lean into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I didn't actually look up what the film was. I looked up the mm. cast and saw Jim Belushi and John Ritter and was like, okay. I looked up and saw that it was a sci-fi and I was like, okay, that's <laughs> that's right up my alley. <laughs> mm. And I was... Uh, I think sci-fi is an interesting way to describe this film because yeah. the elements of sci-fi totaled about 35 seconds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, and even the sci-fi elements weren't really that sci-fi. Like, But no. I'll tell you what, I was... There were some moments that really had me laughing, um, mm. I will say. <laughs> like, okay. I, didn't, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. I enjoyed it. Didn't mind it. All right. Mm. That's high praise for <laughs> this movie. Um, yeah. Zach, what did you think? Oh, I love this movie. It was great. It was the best movie we've ever done. No, uh, what? Um, no, that might be that might be a bit of a stretch. Yeah, you guys did Ace Ventura. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh. At the start, I really hated it. Boy, did this have the worst opening to a movie I think we've ever done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were just like. Let's rush the plot to get to the actual movie and just compiled, like, an hour's worth of lore and movie into, like, five minutes at the start. But it actually then gets into the movie, which is very stupid, and I enjoyed. Wow. Wow. Two people who are kind of positive. Wow. Look, I'm not going to say I hated it, but this is real bad. I don't know what film you two saw. <laughs> There's, yeah, that's fair. There's promise. Uh, I, I don't think the two leads had any chemistry whatsoever. No, I agree. Mm. There's some really, really funny ideas, and then some ideas that just kind of leave you scratching your head. It's going to be fun to talk about, though. That's my positive note. This is going to be very fun to mm. talk about. 
I mean, if that's mm. your positive note, I feel like there's a lot of things that could be said for a lot of movies, like your takeaway. This mm. will be fun to talk about. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. You know what? This felt like a sitcom pilot, you know? Not everything's completely worked out yet, but there's a lot of promise. Just way too long. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just like, <laughs> it's just 80 minutes. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone stretched it out. It was weird. I think they were kind of jiving with the, the bro moment where they started giving each other compliments near the end there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they didn't jive well together, did they? Um, Which is a shame, because I think individually each of their own was pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I read some interesting reviews on Letterboxd. Obviously not Rotten Tomatoes, because that's your thing, Zach. But I read some Letterboxd, and a lot of them said that it was kind of miscast, that maybe Ritter should have played the cop of a CIA agent, and then Belushi would have made the family man work a bit better. Which, you know. I like Belushi in the role. I I found him believable as the sort of CIA agent who was a bit off the rails, a bit of a loose unit, and they sort of did emphasise that at the start. That like, yeah. You get this guy, that's what he does. And I, I absolutely believed it in that particular role. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, they, they have that whole thing where they kind of s- swap their positions. Mm. You know, one guy becomes the meek guy and one guy becomes... So if they if they had swapped positions, they would have just swapped positions again anyway. Yeah, we, we get that. You yeah, know? that's and true. I, uh, maybe that's why people are saying that because they see uh, Ritter. He like does the whole secret agent thing, which is awesome. I, I love that this this like meek guy just suddenly kicking ass for no <laughs> apparent reason whatsoever. Other than he thinks he's a Russian spy. Yeah, like, that, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. He took out a whole clown platoon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the plot here is, um, there's a lot, there's a lot. So we'll, uh, mm. yeah, we'll go through that in a second. But first up, Zach, you pick this. Yes. Do you regret that decision? No, no. Interesting. This is Interesting. maybe one of the best picks I've ever picked for a movie. Actually, you did send me that. You sent me that uh, this morning. You <laughs> yeah. just said, I'm very glad I picked this film. <laughs> Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to bring it out now. I don't think this is a good film, <laughs> but I very much enjoyed it. And I'm very excited to talk about it because there's a lot of things I have to talk about. Is it is it a critical condition or is it a bachelor party for you? <laughs> Ooh. Comparing it to previous comedies that we've done. Yeah. Uh, it might be more of a critical condition, although it had the just the random crap that Bachelor mm. Party had. Yeah, true. Anyway, your other options for this week, you had three other films that you could have chosen. One of them was called The Best Seller, where a mm. hitman works with an author to turn his life story into a book. Which could have been interesting. Mm. That does sound like a cool concept. Mm. You had The Big Town, which does not sound good at all. A gambler becomes romantically involved with two women, and that's all the information we've got about it. So it's probably terrible. They turned that into The Big Love later on. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then the uh, third option was Intervista, which is Italian for interview, a film by Federico Fellini, where he plays himself being interviewed about his own movies, except it's a movie that he's directing, and then weird stuff starts happening during the interview. Apparently it's great, and I was going to watch it, but the problem is... It's sort of like a send-off for him. It's his second last movie, and it's him kind of being like, making movies was a lot of fun. So I'm just going to look back on my movies, and, and I'm going to have a fun time. The problem is I haven't seen a lot of his movies, so I didn't watch it. Oh. Because uh, I feel like I probably shouldn't go into this one. <laughs> yeah, that would have been good, but we'd already done an art house film recently, and it was like, uh, you know, yeah. it could be cool. And also, this one had aliens at the end. I don't know what it was, but something about this movie really... <laughs> Stuck out to me, and I'm glad it did. I'm glad it did. The huge sci-fi element, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah the huge <laughs> sci-fi element. You know, that's that's what we're all about here on this podcast. We're all a bunch of sci-fi nerds, yeah. so that's what I was really in for. It's true. I did notice that, actually. I think when I looked it up uh, to try and find the movie... It was, like, sci-fi, but all of the screenshots, like, had no sci-fi elements in them. I should have guessed it then. I really should have guessed it. Mm, mm. The fact that this is labelled sci-fi is just honestly a lie. <laughs> that it is lying to the public. It's it's just a... It should be, like, an action comedy. That's what it should be. Yeah. Because yeah. it's more like the sci-fi is just a comedic element of this action movie, you know? 
Uh, well, it was released September 25th. Now, it's written and directed by Dennis Feldman, uh, who has written and produced a bunch of films. He did this teen comedy called Just One of the Guys, which is probably the best teen comedy title <laughs> yeah. ever. Just One of the Guys. This is his first and only directing credit. He didn't do anything after this, unfortunately. Man, I really would have liked to see Real Men 2. Real Men 2, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Real men are. Oh, real um, <laughs> two real two men, <laughs> and then oh, and then the the next one is the realist men. Mm. <laughs> Why is it called real men? I don't know. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what a dumb title. Is it because it's two men? Are they real? Comparative to the aliens that they are supposed to be dealing with. I I guess. Be- I I guess in the title made me sort of question whether and the title and knowing that it was. A sci-fi mm. made me question whether one of them was actually an alien. Yeah. L- like, at some point in the film, I was sort of like, are we going to get a twist here? That would have been a cool twist. <laughs> like, yeah, I was thinking that as well. I was thinking that maybe uh, Ritter would have been an alien this whole time, and he's he just thinks he's a h- normal human. Yeah, because he's like because he's like a doppelganger to a dude that dies at the start of the movie, and we get no explanation <laughs> as to why. <laughs> like, they're not twins. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, what? <laughs> there isn't even a line in this movie where, like, Belushi turns to Ritter and says, well done, you are now a real man or something. That would have made it worse. Why are you asking That would have made it worse, but it would have tied into the title. Yeah, it would have given us so- some reason to call it a title. I don't know. Well, I guess we're some kind of real men. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are we? Some kind of real men? <laughs> Oh, um, but for the cast, we do have Jim Belushi as Nick, uh, although he is credited as James Belushi. I don't know when that switch happened, when he started going yeah, by Jim. I was looking at that too. I think it was like l- later 90s, or like, yeah, mid to late 90s, I reckon. Because like, he was on SNL before this, and I think he was James yeah. then. So yeah, must James have been then. some point after this. Um, he is in an Arnie buddy cop movie where the two of them team up called Red Heat. It's apparently not, not too bad. He's also really, really good in Twin Peaks The Return. He plays like mm. one of these two brothers who run a casino in LA and they're just completely inept. They are they're terrible and it's it's very funny. And of course he is the brother of John Belushi, one of the uh, Blues brothers. I haven't seen him in a lot, but I do remember seeing him and like you, you know who Jim Belushi is, like despite yeah. the fact that I haven't seen him, his name is just so in the zeitgeist. And I remember seeing this one Watsky rap video <laughs> where Jim Belushi pulls up in like a nice sports car and then Watsky, someone else and Bo Burnham just walk out and light his car on fire. Oh, wow. And that's the video clip. That sounds like a fever dream. What the <laughs> it's heck? It's wild. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa by Watsky is the name of the song. So he's playing alongside John Ritter, who is Bob, and then also Pillbox for the first, like, two seconds of the film. He was on an award-winning sitcom called Three's Company that wrapped up a few years before this. He's in the 90s It TV movie. He also voices Clifford the Big Red Dog. Yay! I'm so glad you mentioned that. I was going to mention that. I have it right here. (laughs) Hell yeah. Again, another one I know the name of well, but um, John Ritter played um, JD's dad in Scrubs and was meant to come in. He did two episodes as JD's dad in Scrubs, and then they were filming another episode um, where his dad was supposed to come back. And it was, like, the Monday that he was supposed to come in and he died on, like, the Saturday or something. Yeah. And then they all had to scramble and ended up um, riding in uh, Tom Cavanaugh as JD's brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, He was a nominated performer, uh, outstanding performer in an animated uh, program. Yeah, for Clifford. Uh, For the Clifford in a Big Red Top. Great. (laughs) Uh, he didn't win it, but he was nominated, and I, I just want to point that out. And he's really good in this as well. Like, it's pretty obvious that Jim is funny, you know, that's what he's known for, but it was good to see John kind of doing that as well. Yeah, I actually really liked him. I thought he perfectly played the big guy. Although, actually, no, I did have problems with his character arc, but we'll mm. get into it. <laughs> no arc in this film makes sense. <laughs> but I liked the second half of this film a lot. The first half I did not at all. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the reception, it's got no critic score on Rotten Tomatoes because it's only <laughs> four critic reviews, but I checked 
Two of the reviews are positive, two of them are negative, so it would be 50% if they allowed scores based off four reviews. <laughs> yeah. Now, my understanding is that after reviewing films for X amount of time, you can actually get... You can, you can get on there. So, yes. boys, you've mm. done it for two, two seasons now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you going to die, like, absolutely tank this film on Rotten Tomatoes? Ooh. No, absolutely not. The percentages are there. You know, there's only four others. You guys have the, the uh, you know, you have the pull in this point to That's tank true. the film. <laughs> How would you do it? I would absolutely give this the highest rating on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> I possibly could. Amazing. And then absolutely destroy it in my thing and then finish it off with five out of five. Would watch it. <laughs> and then I will write a glowing review but give it one out of five. And it'll still stay <laughs> yeah, on 50%. Yeah, yeah. We didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, no. Gross. <laughs> the audience score for Real Men, though, is 60%. And that's across the board it's 6.1 on imdb 2.8 i think like just higher than average on letterbox as well a lot of the reviews that i saw was just saying this film makes no sense but it's funny <laughs> so <laughs> great that is uh, you know i can't argue with that it works it works uh no idea how much this cost don't know about the budget i would guess one to two million mm. there, there's not many sets or anything here there's some gunfights but i don't know i'd put it i'd put it around the five million ish yeah but hellraiser know. was one million and that looks like 10 times better than yeah this. but that was specifically quite a cheap movie yeah it's yeah it is in one house true there's more locations yeah. here um but what do you think that it both made in the u.s box office we'll go to to i almost said your real name we'll go to clue first <laughs> mm. oh i really couldn't tell you um i am gonna guess it's gotta be under five million that it earned right Oh, it's got two big stars though. So let's let's say under. I, I'm going to guess under ten. Let's let's say under ten. Under ten. Ooh, you're going under ten. Okay. Yes. Um. So um, my theory is it is is it also bombed. I agree. I I I feel this bombed. But because you went under ten, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the system as it were, and I'm gonna go. I I wanna I wanna go around twenty plus twenty plus. Whoa, is what I'm gonna twenty go plus for. million! Damn. In eighty seven though, I, I'm guessing it like twenty. Yeah, I'm guessing like twenty three. You know, but I'll say twenty plus because for some reason you went like ten minus, which is a huge margin. So I wanna. There have are a lot of numbers you know? over ten. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's why I'm hedging my bets. This made a grand total. Of one of the largest numbers we've seen this year, really. It Ooh, made um, $874,000. <laughs> you know, I almost I almost went in the K. I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, nah. Ooh. I was like, almost, I almost went, nah, it didn't even make a million. It didn't. All right, we'll jump into the synopsis in a second. But first up, there are taglines. Three taglines. The way this is going to work is I'm going to read them out. And you both have to give it either a thumb up or a thumb down. First tagline is, the fate of the world is in their hands. Oh, God help us all. <laughs> thumbs down. Oh, wow, that was an aggressive thumbs down. You didn't like that at all? I, I feel like, you know, after seeing the film, I was expecting better. Mm. Oh, yeah, the, 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 this, uh, you, you clearly haven't done this segment before. The taglines <laughs> usually suck. Well, they're movies. all really bad. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a thumbs up though because I I I I think I said to myself God help us all when they when I was watching this movie yeah. so I feel it's appropriate. I think you're just playing devil's advocate. He usually does. I I am a bit absolutely as well. That definitely adds to it as well. The second tagline is: Real men don't hide from danger; they create it. <laughs> what? That's getting a thumbs up for me. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Uh, devil's advocate thumbs down no that's great that was fantastic nick likes machine guns and dobermans bob likes squirt guns and pussycats <laughs> two real men with absolutely nothing in common except the future of mankind <laughs> what? God. what so are they implying that bob doesn't like dobermans <laughs> yep 
They specifically mention it in the film, don't you remember? That part where Bob says he doesn't like Dobermans? <laughs> I remember that scene. Mm. I, I don't remember that one. <laughs> and, and you know what? It was completely unprovoked. That's what weirded me out about it. <laughs> yeah. They were just driving along and he's like, I don't like Dobermans. And he's like, whoa, okay, man. All right. So, so oh, man. sorry. Jesus. They had to cut that in specifically for the tagline. Good Lord. Thumbs down. Big thumbs down for me. That's <laughs> so dumb. Well, what would your tagline be? You work in the marketing department. Go. Uh, my tagline would be, uh, (laughs) movie about some real men getting up to real mischief. (laughs) There's also aliens. Oh. My favorite taglines are the ones that say movie about her at the start. Um, mine would be something along the lines of like, yeah, like two boys getting in a trouble that's out of this world. Something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, see, that's that's the that's that's well played. Congratulations, Sandra, yeah. you're hired. Oh, excellent. Mm-hmm. Wait, what about what about me? What about me, boss? Oh dear. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the synopsis. The first thing that I wrote down was cool spy music, but the problem with this soundtrack is that I really enjoyed it for the first ten minutes, and then they kept mm. using the same song. Yeah. The whole time. Oh, no, no. They very specifically use different music in one scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Where she cracks the whip. Yeah, that was a good s- song. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's the one other scene is at the parents' house. But yeah, like the soundtrack is kind of cool, but the, it it doesn't change uh, uh, aside from those two scenes. It's just constant and gets very mm-hmm. annoying. Very annoying. I think I think we saw the same thing with um. We saw the th- the same thing with uh, crackers. They just kept using the same song. Yeah, yeah. And I I think I only really noticed it. It was really samey in the action scenes because they didn't like change it up very much. I was pretty fine with the music. It was sort of background for me. But I noticed throughout the film that it felt very samey throughout, and the music might have had something to do with that. Yeah, you're you're right. It was uh, it was slightly annoying as it went on, but I don't think it was. Um, it didn't bother me too much. Yeah, I did notice it sort of by the end. I was just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it took me a while before it was really causing any bother. But the way that the movie itself opens is is with a man from the CIA. We later know that this guy is called, uh, he's called mm. Pillbox. He's walking down a park with this glass of water that has got the, uh, it's got like the coat of arms on it. The, 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 the American coat of arms. Oh God, is this what that was all about? Yeah. Fuck. I didn't get this at all. Holy crap. Because I didn't write any of it down because it hit me like a fucking truck. The <laughs> exposition that they hit you with at the start. Immediately, The first yeah. five minutes has more explanation than the rest of the entire film yeah. has combined as to what's going on. And it, it, it hurt my brain. So I didn't pick up any of this. Because, uh, yeah, like it's all important for later. He's walking in a park with the glass of water and he's carrying a map. Wow. All... Various important items for the rest yeah, of the movie. I, I realized they had things at the start of the movie that related to the end of it at all. That's crazy. This guy, he gets shot uh, while he's walking in the park. And the first quote that I wrote down was immediately we cut to the CIA agents showing up at the scene. And one of them is like, he's dead. How could something like this happen? <laughs> And the way he and the way that he delivered the yep. line, it was almost like Luke Skywalker going down to the power station sort of delivery. So meanwhile, the credits were still rolling up to this point. They roll for the first five minutes, yeah. But the credits will continue after this conversation that they have. Mm. So like they haven't even got through the credits before they've started movie exposition like go go go. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This is so aggressive at the start. I was in shock by the end of it. The movie is under 90 minutes as well, so they could have easily had, like, an opening, not animation, but, like, an opening sort of credit with, like, maps and plans and pictures that relate later on while the credits are rolling. I'm confused about, like, the bloke who was shot at the start. It was just some random dude. I'm going, there's, like, 25 agents around. (laughs) He gets shot. They don't catch the guy. The CIA agent goes, how could this happen? It wasn't one of us. And then they just don't question it again. They're like, ah, well, Hmm. I guess he's dead. Let's find somebody else. And there's also the whole thing about how the CIA is, like, split in two about... We'll get to that. Um, Yes, except... Okay. But also, the, the two agents that talk, one of them is a secret spy 
for the evil corporation. The other is also another secret spy, as we turn out. Oh, yeah, they both are... Yeah. So they're talking to each other now, and then there's a twist later. It's like one guy is, like... In the first five minutes, we have a twist villain, which had as much weight as a, a light breeze as a plot twist. And then then uh, later on, it's revealed that guy was also bad. So, like, what? Why didn't both... Why... Why did the first villain? Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of this, <laughs> but I really need to talk about what is going. On? But I anyway, think nope, I think nope. the answer is that the, that they didn't they hadn't finished writing the script yet. Oh right, <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. yeah. Maybe they hadn't realized what's. It's kind of like the whole like like Hydra reveal in Winter Soldier. It doesn't entirely make sense when you're watching the previous stuff because they hadn't figured that out yet. So it, it could be that sort of scenario, maybe. Maybe. It was part of keeping his double agent undercover bad guy. Yeah, it's 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 it look, it's possible that they both didn't know that the other one was also an evil agent, because they do that in, in things. They Sometimes, keep yeah. people in the dark about a lot of information, you know. That way no one can betray one another. Especially with CIA. Yeah, true. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. So then after that clue, they mention that they need to retrieve this map that has gone missing. They need a wild, unpredictable agent. And then we launch into this giant action sequence clue. What what happens in this action sequence? Mm, please tell us. I would like to know. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is the first note I wrote down because, Sandra, this is when I texted you saying, do I need to take notes for this? Should I take notes? <laughs> that makes sense. So- this is the moment where you'd ask. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't know what's going on. But the first note I wrote was Jim Belushi is basically Deadshot and MacGyver combined. Every single shot was like headshot, headshot, headshot. Oh, guy pops up through the window, headshot, bang, bang, bang. (laughs) And then pulls off his shoelace, hooks it on, swings through the window, smashes the window. Mm -hmm. Guy coming to kill him, bursts into the room, sees a guy banging a girl. Oh, nope. (laughs) Spin around. (laughs) Bang! <laughs> Copped him. This leads me, me to my second note. You gave your country a great service. He says to the girl. She goes, do you want me to do it again? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> what an opening. Oh. What an opening. <laughs> wow. And he's like, ah, uh, no, no, no. We're all we're right. We're right. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote this out. This is the first five minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. And all throughout this scene is the most, like, weirdest, like, happy sitcom music it doesn't entirely fit <laughs> but it kind of makes it work kind of mm. there was a quote as well in this scene i can't remember when i i think he's um like he's like interrogating this guy mm. he puts the pill in his throat yeah the fake yep. pill and says that uh that you're gonna die because i've given you this pill and and the guy's response is, you're not going to let me die a horrible death, are you? We're both Americans. And I just thought that was a very <laughs> good <laughs> line. That's, that's a very American line. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But as he turns out, he didn't feed him a poisonous pill at all. It was just one of his shirt buttons. Ha ha ha. But he managed to, to get the location of the, the map. Then he goes outside to take his car, but one second, he's got to test his car, and he throws some pocket sand or something on it, and it explodes immediately, and he's like... I knew it. I was like, damn. And I was like, what is going on? When a car's set up to explode, it's not like... It's not not going to explode. It's not like a pressure plate. You've got to turn on the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Or have, like, a tripwire when you open a door. Yeah. Or, like, something. You're not going to have... Like, what, what... what is the setup? Oh no, a bird landed on the car. <laughs> it fucking explodes immediately because there's a pressure. It's the bird sensor. shit flying over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a mother comes over and, you know, rests her baby on the bonnet. Boom. Boom. Also, how long was he parked there? Yeah. How long was he parked there that they were able to set that up? Well, he was working in a deli or something. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about the deli scene. <laughs> yeah. He's just randomly working at a deli <laughs> oh, to, to track this guy. Like, does he does he actually work there? Yeah. And if he didn't, why did nobody question it? 
Did he just leave his shift? Did he kill a butcher? Is he just like doing the hitman? He snuck in, killed the guy, took the took the outfit. Took the outfit. Nobody else in in the uh, in the deli recognized that it wasn't the same guy <laughs> they've probably been working with for years. <laughs> This is the first five minutes of this film, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> credits are still rolling. The credits roll throughout the entire action sequence. It doesn't stop until, until yeah, he takes the map to the CIA boss and the boss explains that the CIA are in turmoil. Uh, there's like a rogue faction that want to get the big gun, which we don't know what that means just yet, but they're, they're talking about the big gun. Oh, well, they explained it later on. It's the aliens giving them a weapon that can destroy a planet. Yeah, and they want to use it to, to destroy Russia, <laughs> but because it's such a big gun, they'll end up destroying the Earth. But they don't realise that because they're not big picture people. <laughs> what? Like, what? How do they not realise what a bad idea that is? <laughs> See, what? all of this stuff is really, like, it's a good idea. It's a funny idea for, like, Archer or something, you know? Yeah. How do they intend on using the weapon from America to aim at Russia? Look, they'll figure that out. Point down? Like... <laughs> yeah, point down through the planet. <laughs> yeah, point down through the planet at Russia. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. God. So, he's got to follow the map to go to the meeting with this particular guy... Uh, pillbox, but the problem is pillbox is dead. And for some reason, the people that they're meeting up with uh, at this map's location, we, we find out later it's the aliens. They will only respond to someone that looks like pillbox. I, I think is what they're trying to do. So he's got this doppelganger called Bob uh, that Nick has to go and recruit into the CIA, whether he likes it or not. And we see Bob, and he's just this regular suburban dad. Ah, oh, I love regular suburban dad. Yeah, we, we see him fixing his ducks in the front. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, they're out of line. you got to make sure they're all lined up. I think the thing that I really loved about this scene, and this is where it started to just make me laugh, was when he walks in, and they're like, oh, yeah, those guys down the road, they stole my bike. And he's like, you can't just go around making accusations. He just gets so angry at his kid. <laughs> in defense, in defense of the guys down the road, rather than going, oh, well, that sucks. Let's see what we can do about it. He's just like, don't make accusations about people. That is wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With no evidence. With no evidence. With no evidence. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you better go deal with it. And he's like, yeah, dad, kick his butt. He's like, we're civilized people. We don't kick people's <laughs> don't butts. Kick. I thought that was great. Mm. That was good. That was good. It's really good showing his, like, he's just this meek pushover at the start. But it does lead me to probably one of my favorite moments of the film. Oh, yeah? Where he goes to see the bike and ultimately ends up getting hit by the fat dude and pushed into the packing peanuts. Yeah, all the bullies attack him. Yeah. When the bullies attacked him, one thing jumped out at me. The main bully was wearing, like, leather pants and a leather jacket. Oh, yeah. But for a brief second, as he pushed him in the packing peanuts, he stepped on his foot to do it. And we saw he was also wearing thongs. Oh, yeah. So he was wearing thongs, white thongs, with leather pants and a leather vest. And I just thought that that was fantastic. That's good. I like that. That's a good fashion choice. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> it's like, this guy's supposed to be, like, hard ass. And I'm just going, he's mm. rocking the thongs. <laughs> you know, good on him. Hell yeah. So what is it? He goes back into his house. Uh, he goes into his garage because he thinks he hears something in there uh, later that night. And it turns out that it's Belushi. And then we see a scene that is longer than the entire five minute sequence that we just talked about. Oh, yeah. Of him just running around with a rake. <laughs> Yeah, now here's, here's, here's another bit of problem I had with the start of this film. One, yes, this whole scene takes as much as the intro, which just goes to show how fast-paced the intro was. It was yeah. ridiculous. But also, uh, we've literally just uh, established that this guy hates conflict and is a meek baby person. Yeah, he likes pussycats and, and, and squirt guns. Yeah, did yeah. squirt guns. Yeah, 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 that's canon. Exactly. So what's the first thing he does? He picks up a rake to go fight the burglar. Later on, he's talking with Belushi, he gives him a gun, and he immediately goes to shoot him with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's immediately not meek. He's not being meek at all. <laughs> Here's the problem. The first thing a real meek person would have done 
was be like, oh no, there's a burglar. I'm going to go call the cops. Well, yeah. maybe it's because he is a real man. I also liked his trick of walking out and turning the lights off just to quickly run back in and go through the cupboards. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And he also jumps into, like, when he jumps into the garage, he starts screaming. He, like, goes Rambo into it. It's like, why would you start screaming when you think there's a burglar inside? What? And that was a really long sequence. And then Belushi just drops, like, heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of exposition and random tangents. So much. All while just picking things up and putting them together and working on an unknown item. What is he doing? He's MacGyvering something. What's he MacGyvering? It was a gun. He MacGyvered the gun, but what was he using for bullets? Uh, nails. Yeah, it was like nails, right? He tipped out the band-aids and replaced them with nails and used the band-aid box to hold the nails. That's right. That's right. My real question there is, why doesn't he use the actual firearm that is he's shown that he has? Why does he? Why does he MacGyver a fucking Uzi with nails <laughs> shooting out of it? And not only that, but I'm pretty sure later the nails have run out, and he's just firing it. And it's making the sounds. Yep, which is causing them to run off. So again, why not just pull out the gun by that point? Yeah. <laughs> or alternatively, why don't you just point your finger at him and yell bang? <laughs> that is probably one of my favourite running jokes in the whole movie, though, is that yeah, John Ritter, yeah. in this opening sequence, he uses, like, a finger gun. That is so funny. And it just so happens that, like, when he goes bang, that person then gets shot by Belushi. And it's this running yeah. joke, he keeps doing it, and it's just, it's great. Except for when he does it to the guy who steps back into the tree stump and, like, stabs him. <laughs> yeah. That was like the first one that he did. He's like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Amazing! My my gun hands killed a guy. <laughs> gun hand. Just for the rest of the film, he thinks he can kill people with his hands. Exactly. And he's got no reason to doubt that because for some reason it keeps working. <laughs> yeah. People keep getting it's shot. Fantastic. So I think like one thing that I had as a note for the sort of after this sequence where basically, and I, I did put down that all of these guys were shooting like stormtroopers. Like there was two, there was two rockets fired, mm. which had the most ridiculous look as well. Like the rocket puts a hole in his garage door. It just lights up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I thought it was funny that Nick kept going, oh yeah, you're doing a great job. You, you're really doing well. You're just doing fantastic. Like really just like bigging him up the whole time. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. It, it was funny. It really rubbed me the wrong way at first. <laughs> I absolutely was like, what the fuck is going on? This movie. Because cause they, 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 they don't quite have the the right chemistry for it. No, I, I don't think they do. Yeah. Especially at the start. Yeah. I feel later on they're, they're better. And I like the sort of thing where they start complimenting. Like right near the end... Uh, Ritter starts complimenting him as well and yeah. they have this like compliment off I liked that a lot I felt like they were like they were starting to be bros you know they yeah. were like broing up <laughs> it was hilarious I loved it yeah it, it. definitely didn't feel genuine though at the start, it f- which I thought was what made it funny to me, was he yeah, just okay. kept saying it. He kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Every time they get in a situation, like, he's like, oh, I can't believe you did that. You ran you ran away and drew their fire, allowing me to... You saved my life. Like, <laughs> it's clearly not what he did. He knows that's not what he did. What what they should have done was they should have emphasised it and been like, like, he's trying too hard to be friendly. Yeah. A Ritter should have been like, "Why are you being so nice?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm just trying my best to make you feel comfortable, or something, you know, something like that." Could have, could have gone in there to make it a lot better. I feel. I did feel like um, Nick or Belushi was very much doing it in like a sort of Bill Murray sarcastic way. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of Bill Murray from him this whole movie, but he wasn't as. Um, I don't know, like, he wasn't as sarcastic as Bill Murray to really sell it. He was kind of doing it, like, almost straight-faced. Yeah, I got a lot of Bill Murray vibes from him this whole movie. I feel like uh, Bill Murray would have been good in this role. Oh, and also this uh, action sequence here just outside of the house does set up another running joke, which is that these uh, rogue CIA agents who have come to the house to try and um, kill them both, they love hiding in trees. Which uh, which comes back later and is a joke. 
that they tried to make work. Oh, yeah. I, I wrote it down. Um, what? There's a guy hiding in the tree outside. Do you want me to go talk with him? <laughs> It's like, <laughs> ah, you're a funny guy. So they head off. They've got to get to Washington, D.C. to go to this park area that's on the map. Mm. And the rest of the movie is basically a road trip with them trying to get there. Their first location is in Las Vegas. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't forget. Don't forget. It's vitally important. Oh, no. Um, he notices that uh, the milk oh. is, <laughs> is three days old at the neighbor's house, but is fresh at his house. <laughs> So he explains to to Bob that his wife is banging the milkman. <laughs> That's all happening during this fight scene, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. And the only punchline we get on that is is at the very end of the movie. A literal punchline. It is a punchline. Yeah, he mm-hmm. um he confronts the wife and she's like, "Yeah, the milkman's a stalker." Yeah, and then they go and beat up the milkman. <laughs> Let's, we need to talk about this more when we get to that, because that, that was a point that I, I have to make. <laughs> yeah. We have to mm. emphasize uh, that specific part of the film. Oh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Uh, but, but, yeah, first they go to Las Vegas. Bob's family thinks he's in the mental hospital <laughs> yeah. uh, for some reason, so that's why they're not questioning why he's not at home. Yeah, the CIA told him that he was at the mental hospital, which is incredible. <laughs> and if you love exposition dumps, then you're going to love this scene. <laughs> I did love this scene. I'm going to say, I think my first actual laugh out loud moment was he said, ah, oh, you know, the aliens, we've been trying to negotiate with aliens. He's like, what evidence do you have? Pulls out a pen that says, to Nick from his friends far away. <laughs> from his friends far away. <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> that was great. But what made me, what killed me, what, what made me actually laugh out loud was he goes, to Nick from his friends far away. This is your evidence. And Jim Belushi's like, read it and weep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was I, great. I actually, I actually like laughed out loud at read it and weep. I thought that was so funny. He's just like so confident in that. And it's like just the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. It's fantastic. And to prove the point, he nails the pen into a baseball bat, throws it up into the air, and then the pen starts hovering. And I do love that like later on, he's going, oh, don't you have something to write with? He goes, well, I did. Yes. <laughs> but you required more evidence. That was good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. As I said, as I said, the movie gets better as it goes along. Yeah. The yeah. first part is just so rough getting into this movie. So the CIA have been talking to aliens uh, because the Earth is going through an environmental crisis and all life on Earth will die in five years. So they're getting... Uh, what is it? The good... The good package? Yeah, it's the good package. Yeah. yeah that, that's what they call it. They can either get the good package or the big gun from the aliens, and, and the good package mm. will cure the world, the big gun will destroy the world, and that's kind of the, yeah, the general plot here. Yeah, and it's like, I think the idea is that the CIA is split, one half wants the big gun, one half wants the good package. Yeah. yeah. Or something. And I just have to say, who wants the big gun? Why? I mean, it's obviously it's stupid comedy. Is it meant to be? Is it meant to be a a satire on on politics mm. where you've got one side wanting j- j- just war and mayhem and one side wanting peace? Is that it? No, what? I don't. I don't think that's it. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. Am I reading too much into this dumb movie? <laughs> One, you're giving this movie a lot of credit. Two, it is actually America, so I take all of my statements back. They probably would go for big gun. <laughs> They'd probably just use it to, like, threaten other countries. It's like, solve the problem. Solve the world problem. We have a gun that can destroy it. So if you don't fix the Earth, we'll blow it up. Oh, dear. Sounds very American. Clue, the Russians show up again, and they've got to run inside a house to take cover. <laughs> what um? So I, I, I thought it was great. Car pulls up. They're sending in their top negotiator. And it's this woman who knows him by name. They have the, have a bit of a discussion, go into a room, have sex, come out, both of cigarettes, great line here. I only smoke after sex. How much do you smoke? Oh, about a pack a day. That was a good line. He's like, that'll kill you. It won't kill you, but it'll make you really sore. <laughs> I enjoyed that line a lot. <laughs> that was a good line. Why did... 
Why didn't they send out a negotiator? Doesn't the negotiation end with being like, oh, we have a tap in the White House, so we were never going to negotiate with you anyway. Bye. Yeah, most it's- negotiations don't end with actual negotiation. And or yeah, she doesn't do any negotiation. No, she just bangs him. It's it's very, it's, it's Seinfeld-esque, you know? It's uh, negotiation isn't negotiation. Negotiation is sex. Everybody knows that. Yeah, that is true. I think that's that was pretty funny. And I did like the fact that they said, uh, oh, the entire um, the KGB or whatever it is where where they are, we're all dropping our stock in this thing that he clearly tipped them off about. And he's like, ah, oh, no, they're going to get this defense contract. Don't worry. It's still good. They're like, no, no, we're going to tap in the White House. Who told us that's not true. So he's been like leaking <laughs> stock information to the, <laughs> yeah, to the Russians. <laughs> mm. that, was, that was a moment. <laughs> But also, like, for for what? Yeah. There's literally no context aside from them essentially saying, yeah, we have a leak in the White House. Yeah, I feel like this film was pretty heavily edited, so maybe there was something there that they had to cut out. Because there's a whole, like, moment in the very end as well where he, like, changes his mind on something in an instant, and it feels <laughs> like there's, like, a 20-minute scene that we're missing. <laughs> Amazing. So, I don't know. I did like how, um, I think it's when the negotiator's about to leave, one of the two guys says, yeah, go take a walk ski. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was John Ritter. <laughs> go take a walk ski. So, they shoot their way out, more finger gun action, but all of a sudden, the Russians stop shooting at them because uh, they break- <laughs> Oh, my God. Because the gunfight breaks for lunch. For lunch. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. Which is interesting because, like, I don't think that joke necessarily worked here. But it is the sort of joke that I love in movies like Wet Hot American Summer. Like, I love that style of humour, but I don't know if it works in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I laughed. I thought it was good. It, 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 it's funny. It's just so, like, something doesn't quite click for this movie for me to go, this is a comedy. Like, it does near the end. Like, it's, it's funny. I laughed at it a lot. But it just feels like a bad spy movie a lot of the time rather than a funny mm. comedy. And it, I don't know what it was. There was something. But it was like, why? Why did they break for lunch? I don't <laughs> understand. Yeah, because there's no other, like, absurd moments like that really in the rest of the movie. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't go full multi-Python or whatever, where it's all like, yeah. oh, sorry, guys, uh, the cops are here. They're all arresting us. Oh, that's the end of the movie, I guess, yeah. you know. Or like a Spaceballs, we, we've got to watch the movie, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, it, it, yeah, it could have gone a bit more ham on it, you know? They could, they, he could have looked to the camera and it's like, well, if we didn't get out of that gunfight, the movie would have been over, you know? Now for a scene that starts off and I immediately cringed, but th- the further it went on, the more I went, this is actually reasonably progressive for 87. Yeah! Uh, absolutely. I was surprised. Because yeah. it started off and I was like, I hate this and this has aged poorly. <laughs> but then I was like, actually, <laughs> this isn't too bad. Uh, yeah, Clue, what, what is this scene? He goes to visit his parents. Why? First off, why? <laughs> no, you're two seconds in. Why? Why does he... They're being chased by gunmen Russians. Because he's, he knows he's safe there. He knows he's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss the whole thing about how his mum installed bulletproof glass? Oh, oh, of course. <laughs> Which makes them safe from, exactly. you know, gunmen yeah. breaking into their house and yeah. shooting them. His mum's already dealt with the aliens, all right? She has the big gun. Mm. Now, now, if this was the naked gun, the joke would be she installed Russian-proof <laughs> Russian windows proof. and we get a visual <laughs> gag of Russian-proof windows. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is one thing before this that we missed oh yeah just between the breaking for lunch and meeting his parents he gives him a note he says these are all the people we're saving do you have a pen no i did oh yes but it flew off classic uh writes down these are all the people we're saving all the men women children the whole planet basically uh this is what they want and explains that all they're after is a glass of water yeah the aliens (laughs) just want a glass of water (laughs) (laughs) which again (laughs) Made me laugh. That is funny. It, it was just so unexpected. That was good. That was good. I like that. From there, goes to visit his parents, walks into a different room with his mum, and this is where we get the first change in music um, to some sort of sensual music as a woman walks down the stairs. Yeah, the only times the music changes the sexy time. <laughs> Immediately goes up to John Ritter and starts making out with him before 
Mum and uh, and Nick walk back in, and Nick says, "Oh, hey, Dad." Mm. Yeah. It immediately started off, and I went, "Oh no, it's like the Blue Oyster in like Police Academy." The yeah. joke is that, or or Ace Ventura. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, like yeah. where the joke is, the joke is kind of punching down on trans people, but then. Belushi just launches into this monologue, which is actually pretty well written. Yeah, it's like... (laughs) Where he goes into how, like, the family didn't understand at first and all this stuff. And I was like, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, because, like, the joke is no longer on the dad, which, you know, which Mm. is the problem with a lot of these things, isn't it? A lot of those, yeah, particularly in that time frame, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. They then go to New Mexico. We get that whole scene in the field of corn, which I didn't love, where John Ritter initially goes to run away, then realises that he's still carrying the map, which Belushi will need to save the world. So he turns back and and they are reunited. Uh, but Belushi moved the car and they have an argument and whatever. Who cares? <laughs> oh, I like this argument because you see the first sort of change of hands that they have. I like the sort of yin yang they have where one of them's meek and the other's like aggressive. And so this is the first time where it switches positions because a uh, Bob yells at Nick um, and he's like, hey, you, we're, you've got to take this mission seriously. We've got the whole world uh, like Nick's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know this meant so much to you. I'm, I'm so sorry. And uh, unfortunately, it's a bit taken aback when later on, uh, like, they're in the car and he's like, oh, yeah, I was following you the whole time. But hey, you came back and I appreciate you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So it's good. I liked it. I liked it. This is where I think the movie really picked up some speed and uh, not in a bad way. I mean, like, it's it's good. I think the movie picked up its quality here. It kind of immediately drops that though, because they need to grab the uh, the glass to the give glass. the aliens the water. And um... <laughs> no, no, this is the best <laughs> thing in the entire movie. Shut up, Sandra, you're wrong. <laughs> and they realise that there's there's a bunch of clowns in the alleyway where they get in the glass. I think we're missing the point that he stopped to get this glass <laughs> from under a garbage bin <laughs> <laughs> because nobody would suspect it. And then he goes, why do we need this glass? Oh, they've put the presidential seal on it. Why did they do that? Well, for when the aliens are travelling around the universe, we get some promotion. <laughs> get free publicity. <laughs> I did write that entire quote down. I just completely forgot about it. Yeah, that was very good. That was incredible. <laughs> that was the most American joke, I think, in the whole film. <laughs> so great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. But what's uh, even better than that... Oh, well, <laughs> what's even better is that uh, they have the glass. John Ritter looks behind them to make sure no one is is chasing them and says the line, Who are those clowns? And then we see... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, cloud attack. <laughs> we got to what he's looking at. It's a bunch of clowns walking down the alleyway. <laughs> yeah, and these lines feel like they're so ridiculous that it's funny yeah. like you can clearly tell this is comedy whereas it's earlier it's like is it just a funny part of a of a serious action film yeah sure which leads uh, leads to later on one of my favorite recurring jokes they they're facing off with these clowns and and Bob has a breakdown you know <laughs> he's he's so upset you know everything's getting too much for him and then, then Nick's like all right I'm going to tell you this now. You're a Russian sleeper agent. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. And the guy, and, and Bob's like, what, what, what? I, I, no, of course, I can't be. And Nick's like, well, deep down, look deep down. I'm an American spy. What do you want to do to me? And he's like, well, I want to kill you. And I was like, see? <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. I am a Russian spy. See, and this goes more into the whole, like, bigging him up thing, because he immediately runs forward, (laughs) gets punched in the face and knocked out, and then when he comes to, Nick tells him, oh, yeah, you got hit, and then you just took every one of them out on your own. You just went crazy. So he still believes it. Oh, it's, it's fantastic, because for the rest of the film... Bob now believes that he took out all these CIA <laughs> agents and it gives him the power to take on literally everyone. Oh, Though, to be man. fair, he did take one out at the end He there. punched one at the very end, yeah. He did. Yeah, because now he's full of confidence. and, and Which made, of course, Nick go, Huh? <laughs> you actually did take one out, which was fantastic. 
I felt the clown fight was a little was just a tad underwhelming though. I know that like hand to hand choreography, particularly in um in Western movies at the time, wasn't amazing, but it was very quick. They could have they could have had a bit more of a punch on there. I reckon. Oh yeah, yeah. But also, why why do none of the CIA agents have guns? Yeah. <laughs> why is this not a shootout? I don't understand. Everybody knows clowns are trained in hand-to-hand combat. That's true. <laughs> so then Bob and Nick go to a bar, mm. and they go there to quote-unquote get laid, even though Bob's married, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, but he's macho now, so... Oh, true, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but also also he's not looking to get laid, though. It's just Nick. But it's also worth pointing out that at this point he thinks that his wife is banging the milkman. Oh, true. <laughs> that is true. He does believe it at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true to point out. So he would not He would be fine with, you know, tagging along to a seedy bar. He also believes that he is an action hero and stares down like <laughs> these two gruff guys, which is a pretty good moment. I, I think he is an action hero, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. He fucking stares them down. <laughs> But yeah, he stared down these truckers. I like the truckers are like, oh, so sorry. Can we offer you a drink? And he's like, did I ask you for one? (laughs) (laughs) Nick goes up to uh, this quiet, uh, almost librarian looking. You know, she's got the glasses. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, he goes up to her and um, and helps her pick some stuff up that she spilled. And they go over to her house and uh, it's revealed. That that she's not actually meek and quiet. In fact, she is a dominatrix. <laughs> and the music changes. Also, he like I think it's a criminal offense because he's never like, yeah, let's do this. In fact, he's very against it <laughs> for the for mm. pretty much all the scene until the very end. Yeah, uh, she literally locks him in with a but. She has a button to close a cage, like to lock the door. <laughs> There's no safe words here. I love that he was on that wheel, that spinning wheel. <laughs> that was just. Spitting him around too. That does not sound fun. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, uh, Bob's outside. He notices some burglars, and he's like, "Well, I'm an action hero now, so let me go kick their ass." And he does. Kicks all, yeah. He kicks all the burglars. I love Bob for the rest of the film. He's just like an action hero, but he's not at all. But he thinks he is, well, and therefore you know, is. He's beginning to believe. You know, Morpheus. As Morpheus says, all you need is to believe. <laughs> he wears a leather jacket shirt thing? He wears a letterman jacket. That's it. For some reason, yeah, he's a cool guy now. So after um, Nick has had his uh, wild ride um, <laughs> negotiation session. Negotiations, yeah. With uh, this lady. Before, before we move on from that, at the end of that scene... When he sort of breaks down and he's just opening up to her. <laughs> and he's saying about how this time he got rejected. <laughs> yeah, this was great. This was very good. Yes. Okay, so I'm 12. You're 34 and married to my uncle. I still think we could have something special. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't believe it. I was never quite able to recover from that moment. <laughs> Amazing. That was incredible. So it was, it was this point of the film, like just before this, where my wife got home and <laughs> sat down and watched the rest of the film with me and just caught that. She just stu- She just walked in to see all the dominatrix scenes happening. Perfect timing. And was like, what the hell is this film? Yeah. <laughs> so we were having a laugh about that. It's always the right moment when anyone walks in on oh, yeah. anyone watching mm. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the perfect moment for her to walk in. Oh. Is that what he's into now? <laughs> no, I'm watching it from a podcast, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves her house now kind of infatuated with her a little bit. And um, and his mind's just not in the mission anymore. And uh, he starts telling uh, Bob all about it. He's like, oh, I love this girl. Oh, I need to be with her, you know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I should get out of this mission. I don't know if I should be a part of this mission anymore. If no one's got to address my feelings, you know, it's it's got to be me, right? You know, I have to address my own feelings. Otherwise, no one will. And and, and Bob has it with yes. him. Yes. And he lashes out. He's like, he pulls the car over. He opens the door. He's like, what are you doing, man? We're trying to save the world here. <laughs> and you're infatuated with this woman. Get out of here. If you want to leave, go. Yeah. <laughs> Nick eventually leaves. And this is when I think a lot of the movie is cut out because we then cut to Bob following the map uh, to the park. Uh, I don't know if too much is cut out. You know. There was definitely the part where, um, you know, Bob joined the local 
football team <laughs> yep. and got himself a Letterman jacket. That was cut. <laughs> that, was, that was a, a cut scene. I liked the moment where Bob uh, sees a clown and then pulls a gun on the clown, but it's just a clown for a kid's birthday party. <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> and he's going, oh, what is this guy doing walking around just like that? He's just asking to be shot. <laughs> just asking to be shot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that is where I laughed out loud. I thought that was oh. fantastic. Oh, so good. This poor you? random clown for this party bumps into this guy that just immediately pulls a gun on him. And then he walks into the park and Nick is there. Which yeah, like I kind of feel like he probably went off and did some thinking. They might have cut that for time. I don't know. Because he just shows up again. I I thought he did exactly what he did earlier in the movie, which is like he said he left, but he never really left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But no, the movie doesn't explain that. But that's what I thought happened. They introduced this other spy called Mahoney, who seems like a really cool guy. Yep. Then he instantly dies. Oh, damn. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny. The shootout starts happening. They go... It's Mahoney. He's going to help us. And he's like, I'm with you, Nick. And then someone says, don't think so. And then, <laughs> and he gets shot. Immediately dies. The, the whole thing turned around in about four seconds. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm here, Nick. Nope. He's not entirely dead, though, because the firefight ends. They run away into the clearing to fill up the glass from a tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fill it up with water from a tree tap. And um and the CIA boss is there and he reveals that he's actually one of the big gun traders as well. He wants the big gun. Yes, except it doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> no. And yeah, Mahoney lying on the ground. And not only that, but by this point, Mahoney's been in the film for about four seconds. Yep. Being shot. It's now like five minutes later after a fair bit of exposition. And then um Mahoney has crawled close enough to shoot him with a silence pistol as uh, Bob says bang and points the finger <laughs> gun. So once again, Marty doesn't even get his credit no. for saving them. They just think Bob did it. I also I also love the like standoff where um, they're standing there and the boss is like, I'm gonna shoot Nick if you don't if you don't negotiate for the big gun and he's and uh, Bob is like, oh, go ahead. Just shoot him. Yeah, you wouldn't do it. Ah, he's tough. <laughs> he's tough. He'll live a couple of bullets, you know. <laughs> and Nick's like, oh, hang on. Don't be a hero here. Yeah, don't be a hero if I'm the one getting shot for it. And now with the CIA boss dead, the UFO shines its spotlight down into the park and uh, and sends down their spokesperson, which is just a guy from Star Trek. It's just a guy who's walked yeah, off the set of Star it's Trek. it's an alien from Star Trek. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he look, he, he's the most alien-looking human that I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, true. You say that, but I think that's just a guy. <laughs> yeah. Just insulting this poor actor. <laughs> well, <laughs> they, didn't even get, they didn't give him makeup or anything. Uh, he was like, he looked about 40, so he's probably dead now. It's fine with him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I don't think you looked that ridiculous. I think you made a great alien that looked like a human. That guy's 100%. If he is dead, he's 100% haunting this podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> no. What have you done? If the numbers, if the numbers dip on this episode... We'll know why. If the numbers dip, it's not Clue's fault. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the ghost. <laughs> it's the ghost. Wow. <laughs> it's 100% the ghost. And um, yeah. the ghost of, you know what? I'm going to look him up right now. Yeah, he's wearing like a Vulcan outfit from the original series. Mm, mm. That's good. I love all those sorts of things. And this goes, again, goes back to, um, and, you know, I can't go at day without mentioning Seinfeld at all, but mm, of course. Seinfeld mm. doing this whole bit about uh, how at some point the aliens just decided that wearing that one silver sequence, like, spacesuit was going to be it. And at one point, Earth's going to just do the same. Everyone's going to get the same outfit because obviously that's what all the aliens have done. And that's exactly what we saw. They have this whole thing where it's like, oh, we look alike. And he's like, yep. Aliens look like humans. Everyone looks the same. 
And then uh, they trade for the, the, the goods, the good package. Good package. And the alien's like, nice, you're you're wise, humans, good job. He skulls the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he skulls the water. Doesn't yeah. he hand doesn't he hand the glass back to him? Yep. <laughs> so that whole joke about them taking the glass around the galaxy doesn't really apply because he just <laughs> gives the glass back. He's just thirsty. Why did they need to go through all this, like... Because here's the thing. I think that the aliens were actually testing humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And so they didn't actually need the glass of water. That was, like, whatever. That was, like, the first thing they thought of. It was more like to test. If they take the big gun, oh, they're bad people. Mm-hmm. Let's blow them up. If they take the good package, clearly they must be wiser, yeah. you know. Well, I'd like to point out that, um, that Don Dolan, was his name, uh, died... September 22 last year. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That's so fresh. Could be COVID. We don't know. Could be just old age. But he is almost certainly haunting this podcast. Yeah, he's haunting the podcast now. <laughs> we, need, we need to perform a seance now. Yeah. Thanks to you. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that could be a whole other episode. Mm. <laughs> I'm just giving you content. <laughs> yeah. And we'll take it. We'll have- We'll invite you back on for this podcast's first official seance. <laughs> hey. So now that they've got the good package, they uh, they head back home. Bob is dropped back to his nice suburban house in a limo, and he confronts the wife about the whole milkman thing, and then he goes to beat up the milkman. Well, I think my, my favourite part about this was the fact that he's just like, hey, everyone, hey, kids, wait out here. Walks in, and then he's like... The milkman's been coming around a lot lately. It's like, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, I've been away for a week for no reason. Oh, yeah, I was in a mental institution because that's what they told you. Hey, the milkman's been here a lot. Notice that we've got a lot of fresh milk. I do like how he he immediately confronts her and she's like, oh, yeah, he's kind of been harassing me, but I didn't want to bother you because, you know, you hate conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was proven only a week earlier when he... <laughs> when he yelled at his child for accusing someone of stealing his bike. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he goes to beat up the milkman, then he goes to get the bike back and throws the guy that threw him at the packing peanuts. He throws that guy in the packing peanuts. That guy who's now wearing regular shoes, I'll point out. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a good thing you're keeping an eye on the ball there. See, my theory is he didn't want, because this time it was the reverse. He was getting his toes stepped on. That would hurt in thongs. True. So I'm assuming that he probably had, he made a character choice to not be wearing thongs that day. Um, Mm. But I would, I would assume that the rest of his time on set, he was wearing thongs. He was always wearing thongs. Mm. Yeah. That's what his character would do. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, oh yeah. And it also ends on a freeze frame. Yep. (laughs) Punching the milkman. But that is real men right there. That is, uh, that's the movie. It wraps up right there uh, with the same song playing over the credits. <laughs> yep. Uh, our favourite. Same song you know and love. Uh, clue. The way that we rate things here is is it's either an oldie or a goodie. It can be worse than an oldie or better than a goodie. I don't think this movie's going to get either of those, though. What would you rate it? Is it an oldie or a goodie for you? I'm going to give it a goodie. Whoa. It's a right. goodie. Goodie, goodie, yum, yum. Oh. Mm, goodie. Goody, goody, yum, yum. I'll tell you what, it had enough laugh out loud moments for me that I enjoyed it. So, as I said, that read it and weep line, just the way he delivered it, I I thought was really funny. So, there's a couple of moments in there, as we have already discussed plenty. But, uh, yeah, I I thought it was a goodie. All right. A goodie Mm. there from Clue. How about you, Zach? Uh, I want to hear your review for this one. Me, me. Okay. Just just a quick one. Yeah, I want to know what you thought. I'm really curious, actually, genuinely. I think I think the prob I think if I hadn't have seen Hunk earlier in the year, I would have given this a goodie. <laughs> but like Hunk does the same thing. It's like the same sort of level of quality, mm. and there's a lot of like wild and wacky ideas. I think Hunk just works so much better, and because of that, I am comparing it to that. And I don't love comparing movies to other movies, but. I do have to compare it to that film. And that film was great. And this film, not as good. So I think based off that, I'm going to go oldie. I didn't realise Hunk had sci-fi. It was a sci-fi <laughs> oh, film. Oh, yeah. Though. No, it's not sci-fi. It's fantasy. That film is wild. I might just um, <laughs> I might just send it to you because I think you'd enjoy it a lot. It's, it's, it's something else. And if you like this, you'll love Hunk. <laughs> the next episode, Hunk Revisited. Ooh, I'd do it. Ooh. <laughs> 
no. Clue, what are you doing to the show? No. <laughs> I'm just here to shake things up. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you certainly are. Okay. But yeah, it, it is an oldie from me. How about you, Zach? Okay. Well, uh, knowing what you think, because, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I don't like comparing movies either. And thinking about it, Hunk was definitely a way better movie just of how over the top it went, like it went full ham. Yeah, like it had a lot of weird concepts and it delivered on most of them. Uh, honestly, Hunk was probably the biggest surprise of the year of how how just yeah well they executed their stupidness. Everything pointed towards that movie being awful and it was really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but this movie, I feel, oh man, that intro, I, oh, I'm still <laughs> mad at that intro. Actually the worst intro to a movie we've watched ever because of how rushed and stupid it was. Like you, you could have done that so much better, mm. but the movie was enjoyable for me. And would I recommend this to another person? Cause generally that's what I go with. And I, the thing is, I might watch this film again oh my, one day. Wow. It might be a long time before, but I would watch this film again probably. Wow. No, knowing now that the start actually had relevance to the rest of it, I would want to watch it again. So I'm going to I'm going to rate it a goodie, wow. but it's definitely not as good as a lot of other films. Yeah, like at the end of the year, we have uh, a category of what's the best um ah movie, and I think this for you is definitely in the um ah. Category. Oh yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, two goodies and an oldie there. Clue: If you could pick one thing to add and one thing to remove from the movie, just to make it slightly better, what would you pick? Uh, <laughs> good question. Um, you know what? Let me let me think on it. You guys say your answers because I, I need to. Uh, I need to. I need to think on this one. I have something I want to remove. Yep, the whole start. The whole start. <laughs> that whole first bit. And what I would add is mm, more alien stuff. Actually, I want, <laughs> I want the, I want the Russians to have an alien contact as well. <laughs> and so they need the glass for the glass of water to contact their alien. I do like that idea. What would you add, Sandro? I would add a better editor. <laughs> to <laughs> sharpen up the editing a bit. Shots fired. That guy's but probably yes. dead too, ready to hold yeah. the podcast. <laughs> the whole movie uh, did kind of feel like a certain DC film that was edited by a, a trailer company. It sort of had that quality Ooh. to it. Ooh, Ooh shots fired. Ooh. Man, you're a... You, you have a, a makeshift Uzi that shoots nails tonight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would add a better editor. I would remove that running joke of uh, John Ritter wanting to escape. Just because, like, when we got to, like, the third time he tried to escape, it got a bit old. So I would probably mm. just cut that down. Maybe make him try to escape once instead of, like, three to four times. That's what I'm going to remove. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right about removing the majority of the start. But what I would like to see added is the the scene um, where, you know, John Ritter gets... He's Letterman Jacket. I want to see him, mm -hmm. you know, in some sort of uh, varsity blues type, uh, <laughs> type sports sports movie side quest going on. How about like a montage where he's got to suit up and it just takes yeah. a break halfway through where he joins a club to get the chance? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't that sound ideal? That does sound very good. Mm -mm. All right. Well, then time for a quick little battle. It's time. For r -r 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 raving reviews. This is the part of the episode where I get reviews from Rotten Tomatoes, the part of the audience that matters, which is the audience, which I already said. <laughs> the critics don't matter. No one gives a shit about them. I'm not going to do a double take of that. Fuck it. <laughs> How this works is I'll tell you the review that the reviewer wrote, and you have to guess the score. The score is uh, from 0.5... To five. Yes. So there are point fives. Indeed. So it's very important you remember the point fives. Anthony says this DVD was the best $3.99 I ever made my girlfriend spend on me. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't even spend it himself. <laughs> so spend it himself. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Great. It's what he made his girlfriend spend on him. Sandro, what do you think Anthony rated this? Uh, with a funny review like that, I think it's going to be pretty high up. So I'm going to say mm. 4.5. 
4.5, 4.5. That's a good guess. All right, Clue. Mm. He he sounds like an all-out sort of dude. You know, this sounds like one of those reviews mm. where they, they say just something ridiculous with a classic five stars. This dude is all out. Three ninety nine spend five stars more stars than it cost him. Let's go. Okay, you're going five stars. I like your style. I like your right. confidence. You're like five out of five. It was four point five, hey. but Ooh. I liked your confidence. Your confidence was great. Uh, what I would like to know is at for three ninety nine. What what was he missing? What what was that? What how did he lose that that point five? Probably the angriness from his girlfriend when she's yeah. like, "Why did you make me buy this film?" <laughs> when they got out to the dominatrix scene, and she's like, "Why are we watching this?" Still? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the girlfriend probably walked in on him as well during yeah, that scene as well. Exactly. Jeff says, and I like this review. I've been thinking about this for two weeks. And I'm still not sure if it's a deadpan parody of spy slash buddy slash road genre norms or just really half-assed down the line. Either way, J-I-M-B-E-L-U-S-H-I spells (laughs) quotation marks quality. Oh, great. great. (laughs) Yeah, that was a long one. That was a long one. Well, straight off the bat, I mean... (laughs) I feel like I need two weeks to get myself in the same headspace that this guy did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's had two weeks to think on it. You've you've got about 30 seconds. <laughs> but I also question who watches a film and then waits two weeks to put in a review about it. True. Mm, it's mm, like, well, I, I feel like the whole thing, this guy, you know, it's it's played on his mind a lot. The, the quotation marks, the, you know, they tell me that he he's probably not happy. And Mm. I feel like he's probably going to take it down based on the fact that he's been thinking about it so much. So the more he's thought about it, the more he's thought about how much he's hated everything about it. He's given it one and a half stars. Ooh, one and a half. Very harsh. I like your thought train. I like it. It's very in-depth. It's very good. Oh, I'm very unsure about this. I might go three... I'm going to go three. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, it was three out of five. Oh, wow. It was three out of Ooh. five. So once again, what the heck? Sandro is correct. Wow. It's almost like it's almost like he hosts a podcast and does yeah, this. Yeah, and does this every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Ralph says, I remember this and having to burn the clothes that I was wearing in order to rid of them of the stench. <laughs> so, Sandro, what do you think the thoughts of Ralph are here? That's a br- brutal... <laughs> Brutal takedown. Uh, it's got to be 0.5. There's no way it isn't. Mm. Right? Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> there's no, no way. way. Yeah, no, I feel I feel the same. And as much as he's going hard with the stench, I have to go something different to what Sandro went. So. You don't have to. You don't have to. No, no, I do. I do. Okay, okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't you know I make the rules? Um, he does. Yeah, he does make the rules. Oh, I see. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna stick hard on my one and a half. I feel like, I mean, he 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 did say he was burning the clothes, but maybe it maybe it was just a hot day, and he was sweating while watching the movie. <laughs> maybe he was yeah. getting all hot and bothered watching the yeah, Dominatrix yeah, yeah. scene. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> We don't know. He didn't say why. He just mm. said stench. Mm. It could have been him. Yeah, okay. One and a half. You were so close. You're on the right track, but it was one out of five. <laughs> it was one out of five. I was, I was thinking oh. that. But you know what? Right in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right in the middle of you two guys. It was good. Uh, you, were, you were on the right track. It wasn't quite as stenchy mm. as he was making it out to be. So you were on the right track. You were on the right track. Maybe you'll get this one. Now that now that you're on the ball, David says HTTP no, slash slash Facebook dot oh, dot com slash static slash image slash rating slash ws dot off dot gif. What the heck? <laughs> did you click the link? What did it say? Uh, it didn't work. The IP wasn't found anymore. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. David is a busy man. David doesn't have time yep. for words. No. David only has time for gifts. So, I feel like David's thinking negative because if he really cared about the film, 
he would probably want to write a bit more. Mm-hmm. So, you know, talk about the positives. I'm going to go with a two star from David. Two stars. Yeah, that's that's where I'm sitting. Uh, yeah, like, that's true. A lot of the time when we get positive reviews, they're talking and, and they're praising a lot, unless they're five stars, mm-hmm. in which it's usually some dumb joke or it's just a bunch of exclamation marks all in caps. So Ooh. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say five stars. Five stars. Well, you're both wrong. It's 3.5. I don't know how you <laughs> Again, get that. Again, right in the middle. All right. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you guys didn't get that one. I thought that one was very clear. It's pretty obvious. But that's all right. So what are the scores so far, Sandra? I'm on two, and Clue is yet to get a point. But yet really, when we think about it, everyone's winners. So we have the last one, and as we all know, the last one's double points. So, Rashad, who says... Another bad movie that I enjoyed. I'd recommend drinking a few. <laughs> mm, I would. All right. I'm going to say good movie, but bad. You usually see it's hard with Rotten Tomatoes because when it's letterboxed, if it's a bad movie that I love, I rate it too, but I give it a heart. I give it a little heart. So people are like, mm. they know it's positive, but the rating still reflects how bad it is. I don't think I've ever not given a film that I've watched a heart on Letterboxd. Mm. <laughs> I pretty much like everything. Like, mm. I think my worst review is like two and a half stars, and I'm still like, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's it. It's like, yeah. I'm gonna go for two, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a positive rating. But I'm, but but, but I'm gonna go two. I'm gonna go two. I think that's a fair bet. But you know what? I think Rashad, Rashad's like me. Rashad likes a bit of everything. Rashad's not. Rashad's not a hater. Mm. Rashad yeah. knows it's a bad movie, but he enjoyed oh, it. Yeah. Mm. Rashad bases his review not on the quality of the movie, but how he enjoyed the film. Rashad gave it a 3.5 with alcohol. And, uh, yeah. Wow, that's a that's a really good explanation that once again is completely wrong. <laughs> Sandra wins. It was too out of Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Nice. Amazing. All right, I've got one for you. Letterboxd. Letterboxd review of this film. <laughs> yep. A Wild Ride. Uh, That's your review. I saw that on Letterboxd before we started recording. (laughs) What did it get? (laughs) Oh, I want to guess this one. I want to guess this one because I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. I'm going to say you rated this 2.5 and gave it a heart. (laughs) Okay, you are wrong. I gave it a three, but you got points for the heart. Ah, yes. I was really close then. I was really close. All right. And that is the episode right there. Thank you for joining us, Clue. Plug your stuff. I mean, you've got you've got two, no, three EPs out, right? And then a new one coming soon-ish. Uh, I just started working on an album. So I've decided uh, after, you know, the, the COVID negatives and um, mm. not feeling like working on music that much, I've... Uh, had delayed my debut album for a long time, but uh, we're working on it. That's going to be a 2022 job. But yeah, three EPs under Clue, uh, the classic As Seen on TV, Australian Famous, and Under the Red Hood. Plenty of other songs out. I'm on Twitch. I'm doing a heap of stuff there. In fact, I hosted a live dating show between <laughs> two of my uh, two of my regular people who had never met. Um, oh, fantastic! In there last week, and we we sort of played a dating game and had uh, them answering questions. And it turns out they're actually going on a date next week because of it. So, nice! Um, wow, that's, that's really nice. Sounds like a success to me. It was, and you know, we set up um, donations so that uh, the people watching could donate that we were going to give them towards their date. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we do a bunch of stuff over there on Twitch. Um, so that's just Twitch. Is that clue? And yeah, all my socials is that clue. So yeah, check me out. Um, and yeah, yeah, and there'll be links in the uh, links in the episode description. You've also got a song with Gator from the TV show Dave, <laughs> little, yeah. little Dickies show, which is a great track. Um, so yeah, I did that did that song a while ago. Uh, we did that in 2018, like before they came out to Australia on their first Australian tour. So we we did this song called Sponsor Me. Um, so I make like comedy music sort of similar anyway. So I did this concept track, which was basically because at the time me and Gator were like messaging each other and he's like legit on private jets flying around with little Dickie and shit. And I'm like <laughs> sitting in Melbourne in just this little unit, like 
Fuck you, dude. <laughs> um, so we did this song called Sponsor Me, which was basically me just begging brands to give me some sort of deal and him going on about all the shit that uh, <laughs> he's gotten. Um, and then, yeah, when Dave come out and he got like an Emmy nomination and stuff, every time the season's on, the song just pumps, um, which is awesome to see. We shot a video while they were out here and uh, then <laughs> my, my photographer's camera uh he put it onto the computer the computer cocked it and he had to take it into apple who wiped the thing and we lost all the footage Oof. but there is one f- there's one photo on imdb <laughs> there's one seven second <laughs> clip and w- that he sent me as a sample that is that got new life as a spotify canvas it made me so happy nice oh, dear. and uh and one photo on imdb and uh yeah you, you might be on a track with kegel and greg as well my comedy outfit um, absolutely oh. uh but yeah all the links in the episode description check it out there if, uh if you if you so please uh and please do it's always good to support our guests uh you can support the show as well we're on all the things um itunes if you want to drop a review that helps get this show out in front of more people uh instagram facebook and then of course there is patreon where we do drop upwards of two bonus episodes a month and this uh next month for all of october we are continuing our journey through the evil dead franchise yes i think uh the first two are up and then the next one out next week is is army of darkness which was a lot of fun my goodness did did the series take a turn <laughs> <laughs> A good turn or a bad turn? Find out. Yeah, find out. We do. We do. But all that's left to do is uh, is pick next week's movie. So uh, obviously, Clue can help you a bit. But Sandro, you can pick the movie for next week. We have quite a few movies to pick from. Mm. So we have Anna, a biopic based off the life of a Polish actress. Mm-hmm. It got a few. Uh, Best Actress Awards. Cool, cool. Which means it's probably good, which means we're not doing it. Nah. The belly of an architect. It's a good name. A se- <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> a surreal British festival movie about an architect who starts getting mysterious stomach pains. <laughs> yep. Spoiler alert, he has cancer. Oh, no. Big shots. <laughs> Two boys borrow a car from some mobsters to go on a road trip. Spoiler, both boys have cancer. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that's a classic teen that's a classic teen alcohol based movie. That's why it's called Big Shots. They steal a car uh. from some mobsters, <laughs> go to a bar. Right. And it's it's basically super bad, but the car is, you know, from mobsters. Sounds good, sounds good. House of Games. Uh, a psychiatrist helps out one of her patients with a gambling problem by going along to his games. Like father, like son. Uh, a father and son swap bodies. Classic. Near Dark, <laughs> movie about romance and vampires oh. with the late and great Bill Paxton. Amazing. That sounds good. And then Slam Dance, a cartoonist ventures into the underbelly of LA where he's framed for murder. Great. Yep. Great. <laughs> yep. That could be fun, but based off the title, it won't be. So I'm not going to pick Slam Dance. Yep. Nope, that's fair. Uh, let me have a look through these again. Belly of the Architect sounds interesting. But you already know how it ends. But we already know how it ends. Mm. Like Father Like Son is tempting, but I've seen movies like that before, and they're either great or bad, and because it's the 80s, I can only it's predict- It's Freaky Friday. It's literally just Freaky Friday with men. It's Freaky Friday cross that, like, Zac Efron film where the dad becomes young again. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait, isn't is it, uh, uh, the dad is the dad is Matthew Perry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Good Lord. I am going to go near dark because we haven't done a vampire movie on the film before and Bill Paxton is an icon. So I'm going to go for near dark. Uh, let's wrap it up with the best quote from real men. Clue, do you have a quote from the movie that you really liked? Yes. Yes, I do. The The best quote from the movie, and I've said it like three times, to Nick from his friends far away, read it and weep. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Still makes me laugh. I think, oh, so good. So good. I'm going to go with uh, him walking out of the negotiation session with the, um, with the Russian... And he's smoking a cigarette and he's like, I only, I only smoke after sex. About a pack a day. About a pack a day. <laughs> mm. How about you, Zach? Uh, my favorite quote 
uh, we didn't talk about it very much, but it's when they're in a fighting scene where, once again, he's using his hands as finger guns to shoot people. Ah, uh, yes. And he says he'll cover Nick. And uh, Nick dives down. And it's like, he says, you call this cover? And he says, I've only got two hands. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which I thought was very good. I gotta say, just looking back at my notes here, some of the quotes, just phenomenal. Oh no, clown attack. <laughs> okay, so I'm 12, you're 34 and married to my uncle. <laughs> could still make it work. Oh, and one quote I actually didn't mention, but I thought it was really great. We got the baseball you sent. We're learning to play. It's a wonderful game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They get the, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, what a wholesome, what a wholesome ending. Yeah.